let's take a look at how to multiply and divide rational numbers. They ask us to multiply, simplify your answer, and write it as a proper fraction or as a whole or mixed number. Okay, my question is negative two times one tenth. Anytime I'm multiplying a number by a fraction, I like to make both my numbers fractions, just because it makes it a little easier to work out. So remember, when you have an integer number, like negative two, you can make it a fraction by putting it over one. Negative two is the same thing as negative two over one. And then I'm gonna multiply that by my fraction of one over 10. Now the rule when you're multiplying a fraction by a fraction is that you multiply straight across the top and you multiply straight across the bottom. So on the top or the numerator of our fraction, negative two times one. Well, keep in mind the rule for positives and negatives. A negative times a, po a positive is a negative. So negative, and then two times one is two. On the bottom or denominator of my fraction, one times 10 is 10. So I wind up with negative two over 10. Now don't let that negative sign confuse you. When you have a negative fraction, you can choose to either put the negative sign up top or on the bottom, or you can choose to just bring it out front. So I'm gonna bring it out front, that whole fraction is negative. And then I also can reduce. Two goes into both numbers, right? Two goes into both two and 10. So to reduce this, I can say two goes into two one time, and two goes into 10 five times. So this is the same thing as negative one fifth. This time I'm multiplying negative four by three quarters. I'm gonna start by making my negative four a fraction. Remember for an integer number, you can just simply put it over one. I like to use the multiplication dot. You can put the regular time symbol if you prefer. I just like to use this so it doesn't get confused with X's when I have variables. And then I'm gonna multiply by three over four. Just like last time, since we're multiplying a fraction times a fraction, we multiply straight across the numerator or top and straight across the denominator or bottom. On the top, negative four times three gives me negative 12. On the bottom, one times four gives me four. Now, when you have an improper fraction, check to see if they divide evenly. And negative 12 is divisible by four. So that's gonna be the easiest way for me to simplify. Remember, fractions mean division. So negative 12 over four means the same thing as negative 12 divided by four. So if I divide that, a negative divided by a positive gives me a negative answer, and I know 12 divided by four is three. So that's gonna give me negative three. Okay, this time I have two times negative one. They're both integers, so I just have to think about my signs here. Remember, a positive times a negative gives me a negative answer. And of course, two times one is two. So I'm gonna get negative two. This time I have negative 10 times negative one third. Okay, so I have Negative 10, I'm gonna rewrite that as negative 10 over one. Remember for an integer, you can put your number over one, times or multiplied by negative one third. Now that negative sign, I can put it in the top or the bottom of my fraction, or I can leave it out front. They all mean the same thing. And then from here, I'm gonna multiply straight across the numerator and straight across the denominator. So in the numerator, negative 10 times negative one, remember a negative times a negative gives you a positive. So I'm gonna wind up with positive 10. On the bottom, one times three, that's gonna give me three. So of course they did tell us to simplify our answer and write it as a proper fraction, whole or mixed number. Well right now, this is an improper fraction and that means the number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom. 
Last time we saw this, we were able to divide because it divided evenly. This time, 10 does not divide evenly by 3, but I can still think, well, how many times does 3 go into 10? 3 goes into 10 three times, but remember, 3 times 3 only gives me 9. So I have 1 left over out of my 3. So that would give me 3 and 1 third. Okay, we want to multiply. I'm going to start by rewriting my negative 3 as a fraction. Remember, that's the same thing as negative 3 over 1 times. Now, I want to rewrite my mixed number as an improper fraction just to make my multiplication easy. So remember, you can say 1 times 7 is 7. Add the 2 on the top. So 7 plus 2 gives me 9. So this is the same thing as 9 over, and you keep the denominator the same, 7. So, and again, that should make sense. A whole thing is seven sevenths. So I have seven sevenths and two more sevenths, or nine sevenths. So I'm going to write that as nine over seven, and then I'm ready to multiply. Okay, straight across my numerator, negative three times nine gives me negative 27. And straight across my denominator, one times seven gives me seven. And again, I have an improper fraction, right? The number on the top is bigger than the number on the bottom. And I want to change it to either a proper fraction, whole, or mixed number. So in this case, a mixed number, I can make that happen. So I'm thinking how many times, and of course, that negative is just going to make my whole answer negative. So I'm just going to bring that out front. And then I'm thinking how many times does 7 go into 27? Well, 7 goes into 27 three times. Right? 7 times 3 only gives me 21, so 27 minus 21 means I still have 6 left over out of that 7. So this is the same thing as negative 3 and 6 sevenths. Okay, we have negative 2 times negative 2 and 2 thirds. So I'm going to start by writing these both as fractions, right? The negative 2 is the same as negative 2 over 1. And then for my mixed number, I'm just going to turn this into an improper fraction. And I'm not going to worry about the sign. I'm just going to put my negative up top, and then I'm just going to think about the 2 and 2 thirds part, because that negative is already there. Okay? So the easiest way to do this is to say 2 times 3 is 6, plus the 2 gives me 8 thirds. And again, another way to do this, you can say, okay, well, 2 whole is 6 over 3, right? That would, 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then when you add the 2, you get 8. So 8 thirds. Okay, so I'm going to multiply negative 2 over 1 times negative 8 thirds. And then we multiply straight across the numerator and denominator. Now, a negative times a negative gives me a positive number. So this is going to become a positive. And 2 times 8 is 16. 1 times 3 gives me 3. And then I want to simplify this to convert it into a mixed number. So I'm thinking, well, how many times does 3 go into 16? Well, 3 goes into 16 5 times, right? 3 times 5 is 15, so I still have 1 left over out of that 3. So this is 5 and 1 third. Okay, let's multiply. And just like before in my last few problems, I'm going to start by turning them both into fractions. Remember that negative 8 is the same as negative 8 over 1. And I want to multiply that by negative 1 over 4. And again, the negative sign, I could put it on the top or the bottom or out front. They all mean the same thing. I just lined mine up on the top since that's what I did with the other one. And then when I multiply straight across in the numerator, well, a negative times a negative becomes a positive. 8 times 1 is 8. In the denominator, 1 times 4 is 4. Okay, and this divides evenly. Remember, we can think of our fractions as division. 8 divided by 4 gives me just 2. Okay. 
okay, I want to multiply 6 times 1 and 2 fifths. To make 6 a fraction, I'm going to write it as 6 over 1. Right? Any integer or any whole number, you can simply put over 1 to make it a fraction. Times, now for my 1 and 2 fifths, I want to make that a mixed number. I'm sorry, it is a mixed number. I want to make it an improper fraction. So I've got 1 times 5 is 5, right? So the whole thing, basically what I'm doing when I multiply it this way, just to break this down for you guys a little bit, the whole thing of 1, another way to think about that is 5 over 5, right? So I've got 5 over 5 and then 2 fifths more. So that becomes 7 over 5. And if you've seen me do it like a little quicker in the last few problems, an easy way to get to that is to say 1 times 5 is 5, add the 2 on the top is 7, and then you always keep the denominator or bottom number the same, so 7 fifths. Okay, in this case, everything is positive, so I don't have to worry too much about my signs. And then I'm going to multiply straight across the numerator and straight across the denominator. So on the top, or the numerator, I've got 6 times 7, or 42. And on the bottom, or the denominator, I have 1 times 5, or 5. Okay, now this one does not divide evenly. So I want to think, how many times does 5 go into 42? Well, it's going to go in 8 times, right? Because we know 8 times 5 is 40. And then I'm still going to have 2 left over, right? The difference between 40 and 42 out of my 5. So this becomes 8 and 2 fifths. Okay, I'm going to write my negative 3 as negative 3 over 1. And then I'm multiplying that by my fraction of 3 over 8. Okay, when I go straight across the top, remember a negative times a positive is going to give me a negative answer. And 3 times 3 is 9. On the bottom, 1 times 8 is 8. Okay, so I'm going to bring the negative out front. It means the whole answer is going to be negative. And then 8 goes into 9 one time. That gives me 8, so I have 1 left over between 8 and 9 over 8. So negative 1 and 1 eighth. Okay, we're going to multiply, turning negative 2 into a fraction. That's the same as negative 2 over 1. And then turning 3 halves into an improper fraction, well, 3 times 2 is 6, plus the 1 gives me 7 over 2. So I'm going to write that as 7 over 2. And then I'm ready to multiply. On the top, when I go to multiply the numerator, a negative times a positive gives me a negative. 2 times 7, 14. So I get negative 14. On the bottom, 1 times 2 gives me 2. Now this is going to divide evenly. Remember, fractions are division, so the top divided by the bottom. A negative divided by a positive is going to give me a negative. I'm going to bring that out front. And then 14 divided by 2 is 7. So all together, I get negative 7. Okay, 